Okay, so in this episode, we're going to talk about how to import new fonts to the website. So if I were to take my navigation here and say, okay, I want to add a really fancy font to it. What I can do is I can go into my style sheet, go down to the navigation and add a styling called font-family. And then, and then I can set it to some kind of font. Now in the last episode, when we created the navigation, we set it to Arial. And Arial is actually a font that we do have installed in our computer as a preset. I think all computers do have this font. But there's some fonts that computers don't have. And if I want to use them, the way to do it, if you, if you want to see the font, is to go online, download a font, install it on your computer, and then you can use it inside the website. Now, doing it this way allows for you to see the font, but other people who want to see the website online can't see the font. So the way we would need to do it for other people to see it as well would be to either link to the font somewhere online, or we can include the font inside our root folder. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you guys both ways to do it. And we're going to start out with downloading a font, meaning that you need to find somewhere online where you can actually download fonts. Now I have found a website here called thatfont.com, which is a really good website for downloading free fonts that you don't have to pay for. And this is a, well, there's a lot of different fonts in here. So I guess we're just going to choose one and I'm going to go ahead and choose one inside the cartoon style, I guess. We can choose this one called Sketch Match, which is a really distinctive font, so we can see that it does, it does actually work. So I'm gonna go ahead and download this one. Now that I have it downloaded, you should get a zip folder. And as you guys can see, I have it inside my download folder here. If I go ahead and right click on it and extract it, you'll see that we get a couple of different files. And depending on the font, you might get more than one file or not. Uh, but the one we're looking for is the one called the name of the font and then .ttf or .otf, depending on which style it is you're getting. So if you, if you see a .ttf or a dot, uh, .otf, then you need to double click it, and then you, can actually, then you can actually install it. So now that I have installed it, I can close down this little window here, and then I'm gonna go ahead and copy the font, the .ttf font, and then I'm gonna go into my root folder, and then I'm gonna create a folder called fonts because we do need to include it inside the root folder, so we might as well have a directory for it. So I'm gonna say font, then I'm gonna go into the folder and paste it in here. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and rename it because sketch with a space and stuff like big letters, I don't really like using fonts that have that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and eliminate all spaces inside here, create a small M for match and a small S for sketch, just because that's how I do it. You don't have to do it, but that's how I do it. So now that we have this, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy the name of the font so I have it. I'm gonna go into my style sheet and then we're gonna go ahead and include the font into our website. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go at the very top of our code and then I'm gonna start adding some code which will actually go in and look for the font and give it a name so we can actually reference to it inside our style sheet. So the first thing we need to do is we need to write at, as the symbol you use in email addresses and that kind of thing, at font dash face space, then you're going to open up the code. And then we can go ahead and write two different things. First of all, we need to include the name of the font, and then we need to include this, uh, the source for the font. So where we need to go to actually see the font inside our root folder. So we're going to say font dash family, we're going to set it to it was called my match, I think, what was it? Let's just see what it's called. It is called sketch match. So I'm just going to go ahead and call it s M for sketch match, close it, go down to the next line, say SRC for source, colon. Then we're gonna write URL inside of here, parentheses. And then we're gonna write the path to our font. Now we do also need to include single brackets or not single brackets, single uh, quotes. And then in here, we're gonna go ahead and say, okay, from our style sheet, which is inside a folder, we need to go back once to go to the main part of our root folder. So I'm going to say dot dot backslash. So now we're going back a folder from our main part of our root folder. We need to go inside a folder called fonts backslash. Once we're in there, we have a font called sketch match dot TTF. I'm going to go ahead and save it. So now we can actually reference to this font using the font family called SM. So I'm going to go ahead and go down to my navigation here, and I'm just going to go ahead and call it instead of Arial. SM. Save it. Then we're going to go ahead and try and refresh our website. 
And as you guys can see, it changed to this font that we just got. So if I zoom in for you guys, you can actually see we have a new style of font. Now, of course, we did actually install the font, or even if you didn't install the font, we can still see it because it's inside our root folder and being referenced to. So what we can do now is I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys a way to link to a font instead of including into your root folder, which is what I usually prefer to do because it's just much easier. The only downside to this is if you don't have internet access, then you won't actually be able to see that font that you're linking to. Meaning if you're working on the train or in the bus or something, and you are sitting on your laptop and you're working on the website, you won't be able to see the font unless you have internet access. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna go ahead and go to Google and I'm gonna search for something called Lato, which is a, a font we don't have installed on our computer as a default. And as you guys can see, the first pop-up, like the first link we get is Google Fonts Lato. If you see Google Fonts, it's usually a pretty good place to go. So we're gonna go into Google Fonts called Lato, and then you'll get to this site where you see the, the different examples of the font. Now, this is a really good font for flat design. When you make flat design, either graphic art or websites or that kind of thing. So I like to use this font a lot. So if I want to actually use this font, I need to continue up here in the corner where it says open Lato in Google Fonts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that. And then you'll get to this part where you can check on what kind of font within the Lato font you want to include. So if I want a thin style of it, if I want a thin italic style, if I want a light style, a light italic. I'm just gonna go ahead and click all of them off because we want to include all of them. After we've done this, you can either go up here in the corner where it has a download link, it's an arrow, and you can actually download the zip folder. And then you can actually include it like we did last time by just including it, including it inside the root folder. Now that's not what we're gonna do though. We're gonna go, go ahead and link to it by going down to where it says, add this code to your website. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and copy this line. Go into our website go to the index.html. Then we're gonna to go to the head part of our website, like the head, not the header, but the head. And on top of our style sheet, because we need to have this file available to us before the style sheet, since we're using the fonts inside the style sheet, so before the link to the style sheet, we're gonna add this line. Now, if I zoom out, you guys can actually see we have this one big line, which is actually really long, and this is where it ends, so it's, it's this big. And what you'll notice is, if I go ahead and zoom in for you guys, over here where it says family equal to Lato colon, and then it says 400, 100, 100 italic, 300, 300 italic. Now, if I were to go into my style sheet and I want to refer to this font, you need to refer to the one that it's set equal to. So that means Lato with, with a big L because that's how they wrote it. Now, the font weight of it, like, you know, the thickness of the font will be determined on the number that I set the font weight to inside my style sheet. And we'll get to that. So if we go into the style sheet here, I'm just gonna go and zoom in. Down here where it says font family, I'm gonna go ahead and write Lato with the big L. Underneath here, I'm gonna say font dash weight. And inside here, we can write either 100, 300, 400, 700 or 900, depending on how thick we want it. And we can also add italic or bold or whatever, we well not bold in this case. So in this one, we're just gonna go ahead and say 300 without anything behind it, just 300. Save it. We're gonna go to the website that we made. And as you guys can see, we now changed it to Lato. Now this font that we used right here is pretty thin. So we might actually use 400 instead. So we're just gonna go ahead and write four save it, go to our browser, and it's a bit thicker now. So now we have something that looks quite good. And I think we're gonna use Lato from this point on inside the, the website. And I know that it's not a good design choice to use the same font over and over and over again. Usually you want two or three different choices, but we're just gonna use this one for now. This is essentially how you include a font inside a website. So we're just gonna go ahead and end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.